Electronic cowbells are a trigger type that I see people asking about quite regularly, but I've always found myself quite underwhelmed by the execution of the ones that I've seen. So when I was offered a chance to review this Unlock Electronic Cowbell, I was interested to see if it does anything different or if it's just another basic trigger in a cowbell shaped case. I'm Luke, this is the eDrum Workshop, and although I was sent this e-cowbell along with some other products at no cost to myself by Coral Music and World Drummers, the usual review disclaimer applies. All views in this video are my own and include pros and cons. I'm able to keep my reviews independent because I'm supported by my store over at the eDrumWorkshop.com. There you can buy kits, instruments and samples for your electronic drum module. This is the best way to support my channel and you'll also get a great upgrade to your eDrums in return. I've had a surprising journey with this cowbell pad considering how simple it is. There are only two components, the cowbell trigger itself and this small mounting rod. Yet I've managed to have some pretty big issues with both of these that I'll get into shortly. So when the cowbell first arrived, there is a chance that I had unrealistic hopes about its capabilities. I'm hoping that's a switch under there, which means you'll get two zones out of it, but we will find out. No, this is a simple plastic box with a single piezo inside and a rubber pad on top that you hit so it has one zone. When I first set up and played the pad it worked pretty well on all of my modules though I did get some slight re-triggering. But every module that I used was able to dial it out easily enough with the usual settings. Despite this performance though, there are a surprising number of things that I'm not a big fan of with the design of this pad. The most obvious quirk is how it sits on the mounting rod. I've personally never played a cowbell at this angle and I don't usually see other people playing them like this either, so why isn't the mounting section just straight out of the back? When the rod is held vertically, the pad is always angled down. Is the strike zone of this pad intended to be across the top or is it intended to be the raised rubber section? because if it's the raised rubber like I would expect from looking at it, that's much harder to hit unless I adjust the angle of the entire mount to make the pad horizontal. Now this is where the journey got frustrating. As you can clearly see on this World Drummers demo video, they have the mounting rod set up the same way that I do, so I assumed that I had it set up in the intended way. I spent the majority of my time testing it like this, getting annoyed by its design. It's a simple straight rod and the tube attachment at the bottom is actually a similar diameter to many cymbal arms and L rods that come with electronic drum kits, so that is pretty handy. It can also easily mount to adjustable clamps such as a rack multi clamp or various other kinds of multi clamps that are available. However, when you assemble the rod in this way, this particular screw doesn't lock into place when you reach the end of the thread, so on many occasions it's actually unscrewed itself while I'm attempting to secure the top thumb screw into place. Without adding an extra piece into the mix, it makes it hard to properly tighten it up unless you hold the screw in place, but it can still come undone. The rubber grommet that the pad comes with compresses to hold things into place, but it doesn't stop the cowbell from easily rotating on the mount when you're playing, which could then lead to it unscrewing itself. The bottom screw can easily come loose too, so I regularly had to re-tighten it. And to cap it all off, the pad also bounces around a lot, which I initially believed to be the cause of the re-triggering that needed dialing out. So all round, it seemed like a pretty terrible design design and well it kind of is, but I did spot something when I was browsing the World Drummers website. The rod is set up differently and also includes an extra washer in this photo. Oh come on, 
This is clearly how it's supposed to work. The thumb screw doesn't back out, so you can then mount the cowbell and use this nut to tighten it down, as long as there's a washer there to keep things in place. Otherwise, this nut can slip through the gap. So that must be what the extra washer is for in that photo. I still think this is annoying because it can't be easily hand tightened. I had to use a wrench to properly secure it. I think that almost any drum product that you might want to quickly mount or move around should come with parts that are either hand adjustable or adjustable with a drum key. The top of the rod is 6mm, so I actually have some small wing nuts that I could use instead to make things easier. Either way, setting it up like this feels much more solid and it doesn't bounce or move around quite as readily. So that was a good start, but unfortunately, it didn't solve the re-triggering for me. I also found a really weird triggering issue as time went on. This is very strange and I can't work out why it's doing it. I used a single zone preset on the Mimic so there shouldn't be another zone to trigger, but it seemed to be triggering Crash 2. And it wasn't a crosstalk issue because I didn't have Crash 2 plugged in. If I used particular dual zone presets on my TD50X, I could kind of replicate this by getting it to believe there was a rim zone. But if I chose other presets or the BT1 Sends preset, which is a dedicated single zone preset, it worked exactly as I expected. So I don't know if there's something going on with the jack connectors that's causing this or something. Either way, this is just another annoying thing to manage. And then when I was about to shoot some more footage, the pad just died. Oh dear. It's not the cable. That rattling was not there before, so I think something has come loose inside. I'm gonna see if I can get it open because there's a little uh, break in the plastic just under this jack. I'm hoping that means this top part can come off and I can examine inside. All uh, right, okay, so there's a screw under here. I'm glad that it's uh, user serviceable in this way. That is actually very handy, it's not just an entirely molded shell that you can't get into. Sounded like maybe a cable has disconnected or something like that, we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's got a connector on that side, so I'm gonna try and resolder this back on. The fact that there was a rattle makes me think that at least one of these had already come undone before I opened this. I mean, but it's a simple box, right? Like, there's there's not much that can go wrong with it. Okay, I've resoldered it, and I've put a bit of hot glue on it to try and ensure that that doesn't happen again. It's not the cleanest job in the world, but it is working, so let's see how we get on. Yeah, okay, so it's performing better than it did when I first got it now. It's still doing that weird thing though on the Mimic. I don't know why. Right, so resoldering the piezo seems to have fixed the re-trigger issue as well. I can only assume then that the wires must have been a little bit loose to begin with and that's what was causing the initial re-triggering. Maybe the wires were making and breaking contact with each hit and then they've eventually come off entirely. This is a cheap product, so there's bound to be some faulty ones now and again. Heck, I've had the wires come off piezos on my Roland Digital Snare. Since I was sent this, I was happy to rip it open and investigate and I had a feeling that fixing the issue would be within my wheelhouse. This might not be the case for everybody so you have to decide whether this risk is worth it or not for you if you were looking to purchase a trigger like this. However, I still think that the mounting rod is pretty awful. It's clearly been made from off-the-shelf nuts and bolts to keep the price down and even the distributor didn't work out how it's supposed to be put together. So I think it should just come with a more standard percussion mount like an acoustic cowbell and eyelet clamp which attaches to an L rod or something similar, but whatever the reasons for these decisions, it just kind of screams of a product that hasn't had all of the details well thought through, which is a real shame because I wanted to be able to recommend this as a simple trigger to expand your kit. If you have a free slot in your module or you want to split a pad and use this instead of a rim zone, and if you're more lucky than I am and you don't get any of the triggering issues, you might be happy with these compromises 
I just think that it misses the mark. It's currently up at 48 US dollars on the World Drummers website, but they also appear to have a Roland BT1 style bar trigger available for $30. Now that trigger also comes with the same kind of mount, but the mounting hole on the pad appears to be flat. So that solves one of the problems, which means it might be better value if it triggers as well as this pad and you're not as fussed about the aesthetics. As I mentioned up top, I'd personally like to see cowbell pads with at least two zones. Hitting the edge and hitting the top of an acoustic cowbell is completely different, so using a simple edge switch would give you two zones in the same way that an electronic cymbal pad does. If you don't need two zones then you could just hook it up with a mono cable, change the sounds to be the same, whatever, but it would be nice to have the choice. I was also sent some unlocked symbols that were far more interesting. You can get my full thoughts in this review video right here. Don't forget to check out the eDrumworkshop.com for new kits, instruments or samples for your eDrums, and above all, enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers!